Okay, welcome back to my new uh, uh, Matplotlib tutorial. Um, in the previous video, I explained how you can actually create a simple histogram and we used uh, a toy Monte Carlo simulation of a dice to show how we can get a uniform distribution in our bins. And now I would like to continue with that and go one step further. So now we can maybe use 10 dice yeah, in order to create a kind of Gaussian distribution. And then I will also explain how to make a fit to that. And yeah, in order to do that, we directly, uh, as usual, dive into the topic. So we create a new tutorial file, which we maybe call tutorial5.py. And uh, the first thing which we have to do, as usual, we have to import our uh, matplotlib pyplot package, splt. And because we will also need it later, we can import our numpy package, snp. And now the first thing which we have to do, if we want to create this uh, simulation of 10 dice, we should define the number of times that we want to throw our dice. So let's suppose we want to do that uh, 100,000 times, which is quite a large number, but we need this in order to really get a very nice distribution by having enough statistics. So then in the next step, I would like then to create an empty array uh, with the function uh, empty, which is implemented in NumPy and then I have to write here uh, n, which means that we create an array with the size of n, where n is the number of times that we want to throw the dice. And why we do that will become clear in a few moments. So now we have to create a for loop and we write here for i in range and then 10 because we have 10 dice. And then we have to take our array, which we created before and always add the a new array which we create now with np random rand int 17n and this function i explained in the previous video already how it works so now we create basically a new array uh, with the limits 1 and 6 because we always have to subtract 1 and then with the size n and this we have to add 10 times to our previously created empty array and this gives us then at the end um, yeah, a simulation of 10 dice. And just to show that this works, uh, so you believe me after that, uh, we can write here plt plot hist and then just r as the uh, random array that we created. And uh, yeah, and plt uh, show, sorry. And now we can actually uh, try that, whether it works, Python 3 tutorial5.py and now we can see here a nice uh, yeah, distribution. So this would happen when you or this histogram comes out when you have a dice which you throw if you have 10 dice which you throw uh, n times. But of course the binning is uh, set automatically by pyplot and also the ranges. So uh, of course when we have a dice it makes only sense to have integer numbers and this we don't have here at the moment. We have some kind of arbitrary values for the bins. So um, maybe we should define our uh, limits manually and also the number of bins. Uh, in this case, I think it would make sense to go from 10 to 60 because there are basically no values which are smaller or larger than that. And also then the number of bins should be 50 uh, because every bin should be one number on our dice. So what we can uh, actually write here then is uh, in, into the arguments of the hist function is bins equal to 50 because we want to have 50 bins. And we can define the range in this form that we write here uh, as the first argument for this range argument 10 and uh, the last one should be 60. And then as you can see here, we can see our very nice uh, distribution uh, which comes out from that. So if you have 10 dice at home and you can uh, throw them 100,000 times at the end, when you plot this in histogram, this should come out. Okay, and just for completeness, we should also give it a title. So we can write here, uh, maybe Gaussian example and uh, an X label, of course. And here we call it maybe numbers and an Y label. And here, as usual, we write entries for the histogram. Yeah? And now we can test it. Yeah, and now we have uh, basically a complete histogram. And now we want to create a fit. Yeah, so basically whenever we deal with dice, then of course we have to take a binomial distribution into account, which is a standard example for statistics basically. But if the product of the number of dice 
and the probability and one minus the probability is much larger than one, which is of course the case here, then we can actually use an approximation with a Gaussian. Yeah? And that we will do now to prove that this basically works. So in order to do that, we use a new um, package, which is called SciPy. And from that, we want to import uh, CurveFit, which is part of uh, Optimize. So we have to write from SciPy Optimize, import CurveFit. And then after doing that, we first have to define our function, which we want to fit. So of course, um, yeah, there should be a Gaussian, as I said, and as far as I know, there is no built-in function of that available. So we have to define it ourselves. Um, and we just call it, in this case, Gauss. And of course, we need four parameter for a Gaussian, which is uh, the X value. Uh, then we have uh, the fit parameters. One is the amplitude. Uh, the height of our maximum, basically. Then we have the mean value, which we call in this case, maybe mu. And we have our standard deviation, which is called sigma. And then we can just return it, the function. So we write amplitude times np dot exp. And uh, we have to use the exponential from numpy again, otherwise it will uh, give errors later. And um, then we have to write minus minus x minus mu and for this we have to square divided by two times sigma and this is also squared so this is the standard definition of a gaussian and you can check this in every statistics book or in wikipedia where it's explained why it should be like that and curve fit is basically used to make fits for functions however we have now histograms therefore we have to define first uh, an x, y space in order to uh, yeah, create this fit. And this we will do now in the next step. So first we can define the x space uh, by writing again np lin space, and then uh, it will be 10, 10 to 60 as the limits and uh, 50 entries. Yeah. So similar to the 50 bins that we have and to the limits that we have chosen here, we have to create the same uh, lin space. And now in the next step, we have to get access to our y values of the histogram. And uh, in order to do that, uh, we can use the return values from our histogram. So people normally write it like this uh, n bins patches equals that. And this means that uh, we get as one parameter the number of entries per bin and the limits of our bins and the number of bins. Uh, so when we write here, for example, print n bins patches, and we run our code, then we see here uh, in the first array, this is uh, this n, which is the height in the histogram, which in the maximum somewhere around uh, maybe 7,240. And uh, then the bin uh, ranges from 10 to 11 is the first bin, from 11 to 12 the second bin, and so on, until 60. And then the last uh, part gives you then the number of bins, which would be in this case 50. And now we can easily extract the y values from that by writing y equals n. And now uh, the only thing which we have to do, we have to use then our curve fitting function. And this gives two return values. One is the array of the optimized parameters and one is the yeah, covariance basically, so which is related to the errors. So we can write here p opt, uh, p cov for co covariance, and then we write curve fit, uh, and then we have to insert the function that we want to fit, which is in this case Gauss, and then we have to uh, insert our x values, which we defined here, then we have to insert our y values, which we take from the histogram. And then when you run this code, you will find out that it might not work correctly, we can actually try this one time and uh, print out our optimum value p opt. And you see that all three values, the amplitude, the mu value, the mean value and the standard deviation are all one, which means that uh, the fit does not work. And it also gives you here an error message. So it's always useful to uh, give some start parameters. Yeah, you can maybe set some limits or you can give some initial um, starting points where the fit should start. And from that, we can use the argument P0, um, which is in this case, then uh, first the first argument here is the amplitude, which was in our histogram around 7000. 
and then an approximate mean value, which can be maybe 25. Of course, it should be a little bit higher. Maybe we can choose 35 directly and the standard deviation, which is uh, of course larger than uh, zero. So let's suppose it should be five. And now we can run our code again. And now it seems to work. We have now our uh, amplitude, which is exactly 7,314 point something. Then our mean value, which is uh, 35 point something and our standard deviation, which is 5.5 something. Yeah. And of course we want to see how the plot looks like. So in the next step, I would like to plot this. Yeah, why we have defined already, um, but I think in principle we can just override it or yeah, in principle we can just override it and write here then Gauss, the function that we have defined here, X we have used here already. And then uh, the first parameter, which is the amplitude, the first, uh, the second parameter, which is the mu, the mean value. And the third one, which is the standard deviation. And now we can actually plot that uh, by writing X, Y, and maybe we can also choose another color in this case, for example, red. Uh, and the line style can be again dashed. And when we plot this, then we can see here our nice Gaussian fit to the histogram. So everything works well. And now as usual, in order to distinguish between the data and the fit, we can create a, uh, we can create a legend. So in this case, we can give the histogram a label, which we called maybe um, yeah, just histogram. And our um, plot, we can give a label, which we call fit function. And then the only thing which we have to do here is to create our legend. And when we run this, uh, you can see that automatically because the standard option is that it tries to search the best place where to put the legend and now it puts it in the upper right corner because PyPlot thinks that this is the best place where to put it. Okay, yeah, this uh, this was everything which I want to show. Now you know how to create histograms, how to yeah, how to deal with bin data, how to make fits, um, especially when it comes to Gaussian. But of course, we can also like you can also use an exponential fit, for example, when you deal with um, radioactive decays, with lifetimes from particles whatsoever, yeah, there's no limit. And if you do this, or if you need this for your lab courses or um, for an experiment that you perform, then I think this is a quite easy going thing. Some things are a little bit easier than in root. Some things are a little bit more, uh, so, yeah, things are of course different and some things are maybe a little bit more difficult also, depending on what you want to do. Uh, but uh, I personally like it and I think um, this shows already that it works quite fine. Yeah, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. If you like it, please hit the like button. Please subscribe my channel if you have not done so far. And uh, yeah, I would be really happy if you stay tuned until my next video about matplotlib will come. And if you have any ideas what other topic I should cover, please put it into the comment section. I will try to do that and then uh, see you later.